Dr. Lori Cessnick here today discussing the three subtypes of developmental dyslexia. They are phonological dyslexia, surface dyslexia, and something I like to call developmental neglect dyslexia. Each of these things are discernible through testing and treatable through implementing techniques that focus on someone's strengths rather than the problems that are creating the dyslexia in the first place. Phonological dyslexia um, is determined in two ways. One, the types of reading errors are phonetic in nature. So people have a hard time sounding outwards and applying the sounding out rules to reading. Um, so a good way to figure out whether someone might be phonological dyslexic would be to give them non-words or unfamiliar words to read because those types of words obviously don't really exist so you can't have a visual representation or memory for them. So by nature of them being unfamiliar or fake, you actually have to apply the sounding out rules. So people who can't read unfamiliar or fake words tend to be phonological dyslexic. Um, of course, you also want to determine that there is a language-based deficit that is underlying that difficulty. Uh, the types of populations that are susceptible to phonological dyslexia would be uh, children with a history for ear infections, especially chronic ear infections, are susceptible. Uh, certain autistic populations with uh, obviously language-based deficits in many of those populations. Uh, people who have chronic speech delay or children that were um, speech delayed are, are susceptible to these, these issues. And people who are phonological dyslexic have, tend to have uh, when they're the more pure forms, tend to have strengths in nonverbal learning, which can allow them to learn in other ways. And the second type of dyslexia I most often see in children is surface dyslexia, opposite to phonological dyslexia in the sense that they sound everything out because they don't have visual representations of words, or the more proper way to say it is they do not have orthographic representations of words, which implies it is difficult for one reason or another, uh, which we can discuss in a different video, um, it's difficult for them to understand the order of letters in words and actually have a visual representation for those letters in order. So because that does not exist very well for them or easily for them, they go to the left of the words and they sound things out in a piecemeal fashion. So they're always applying the rules for sounding out due to not having these visual representations of words or orthographic representations of words. Thirdly, developmental neglect dyslexia, which I believe is far, I believe is far more prominent than is ever discussed. Uh, developmental neglect dyslexia leads to errors like reversals of letters. It leads to reading words right to left or just reading the letters not in sequence, left to right, but in odd, other odd sequences. This is due to what I believe is a deficit of visual attention, where they have difficulty focusing their att visual attention where it needs to go. There is a dominance and, and visual bias for certain parts of the word that have a basis in um, specific brain function and or issues uh, going on in the visual system. So visual issues and or brain-based issues can create developmental neglect dyslexia. Those are the three most prominent forms of dyslexia in children. And by development, we mean not acquired from a head injury or an insult later in life where you had reading and then it went away. We can discuss acquired cases another day, but those are the three most prominent cases of developmental dyslexia in children. It's Dr. Lori Sesnick for Mind Matters. See you next time.